What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. I have a very special guest, John Molina Jr. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you, yourself? Good. I'm doing real good. So I called you because I want to ask you some questions, uh, get the fans um, some more information on John Molina Jr. and what's next. So without further ado, let's get everything started. And you had a very tough and tricky fight with TMT fighter Mickey Bay in what is being called the round of the year. You were able to stop Mickey Bay in the 12th round when it seemingly was hopeless. So can you just explain... To the fans, what was going through your head at that given moment, and what got you through it? Uh, you know, the fight's never over until the last bell rings. You know, I'm the kind of fighter that enjoys 12-round fights. Unfortunately, this fight was a 10-round fight because we had to go into enemy territory, if you will, and, and uh, take the opportunity that was there, which is to fight Mickey Bay and uh, fight it on his guys' uh, promotional company with their network. But most of my mind was just uh, we needed the knockout to win. Even had I beat him decisively from pillar to post, it still wouldn't have went in my favor, given that we were fighting an uphill battle. So we had to get a knockout uh, to, to become victorious for that fight. All right. And speaking of Bay, his promoter, Floyd Mayweather Jr., he just had an impressive win over Canelo. In your opinion, is there anyone currently that could beat Mayweather? And what would you do um, to beat Mayweather? Uh, as of right now, there, there's nobody out there for Mayweather uh, to fight. The only fights out there for him are the intriguing names that the uh, the boxing uh, not now I wouldn't say the boxing community but the, the world if you will will still want to see him in there with a Pacquiao granted it's four years past what it should have been um, as of right now the only challenge I think there can be for Floyd Mayweather and the only reason why it would be a challenge is because the guys are bigger stronger guys would be like a Gennady Golovkin is the only feasible fight even a Sergio Martinez who's lost some steam um, I don't intriguing as if it was to take place about two years ago when Sergio was on top of the, you know, uh, on top of uh, a lot of people's pound for pound list. Now it just seems the last couple of fights, even with his injury, uh, that's not a fight I would want to see personally. The only fight I think out there for, for Floyd would be Golovkin, and that's only because of his strength, not because of his uh, ability to be to, to box or to hang in there with him, but only because of his strength. It would be and enjoyable to watch and see how uh, Floyd Mayweather diffuses that with his uh, technical skill. Great answer. I definitely agree with you. And although it appears he's going to be out till 2014 with hand injuries, you've recently expressed interest in fighting Omar Figueroa Jr. So what appeals to you about that matchup? Uh, I just, uh, at 135, I don't see a greater fight at 135. Yeah, you have two guys that come forward who leave it all in the ring. I think uh, Omar Figueroa is a great fighter. Unfortunately, his hands are sore. You know, so that I don't see that fight happening until 2014. You know, that we would love to go right into that fight, but I don't think uh, Team Figueroa is going to want to go right into that fight. I think they're going to take a soft touch first, and then to go in there uh, to, to mix it up with someone like myself. But again, at 135, I, I really don't see the only other person who's a bit at, uh, intriguing for me to fight would be a, a Gamboa. But uh, again, I don't see that fight happening. Uh, if it would present itself, uh, I know our team would, would jump on it uh, wholeheartedly. All right. And I heard in a recent interview that you're willing to travel up to 140, test the waters at junior welterweight. So if that were the case, who would you like to fight at 140? And with Antonio DeMarco recently moving up to 40, um, would you entertain a rematch with him or are you looking for other names? Uh, definitely, uh, you know, when we, when we fought Antonio DeMarco, it was definitely more the opportunity uh, for the WBC right now. Unless the fans uh, were to be, uh, you know, hollering for that fight, if you will, then I would be a fight we'd go after now that he is up at 140. But uh, all those that are something that has been entertaining from both parties. Uh, Antonio De uh, DeMarco has uh, other battles that I'm not at liberty to say that he needs to deal with first before anything like that can happen. Um, but again, we there's also been something, like I said, names have been thrown around. His name was one of them that got brought to the table. And, uh, you know, for, for us at 140, I think this is a lot Peterson, unfortunately, he has to fight his um, his mandatory. Otherwise, that'd be a great fight that I would like to walk into. Uh, I know he uh, just came off a loss, but I know he's also a name that would be uh, a good style for Lion, a good style matchup. At 140, I think it, it opens a lot of doors uh, for us. There's a lot of good fighters out there. Definitely, a lot of action. And just in boxing in general, you seem very impartial with your boxing knowledge, aside from being a boxer. So we've recently seen a fair share of judging that's been questionable. Some judge, C.J. Ross, scored the Canelo-Mayweather fight, 114, even a draw. Um, recently, Chavez Jr. versus Brian Vera. We've seen the outcome on that. 
What did you see in the Chavez Jr. versus Brian Vera fight, and do you think it was justified? Uh, definitely not justified. You know, uh, you know, unfortunately, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is a business, and the more lucrative fight is not a Brian Vera versus X, Y, and Z. The more lucrative fight is with us, uh, Chavez Jr. versus X, Y, and Z. And so the powers that be know that. Um, I mean, it definitely was a robbery. It's sad for Brian Vera because he did what he had to do, and it, it seemed like Chavez Jr. did take him very lightly. I mean, you can tell by in, in the weight loss and, and even in his conditioning when the fight didn't seem up to par, you know, to, to beat a guy like Brian Vera. And so, you know, I believe it's unfair, but that's just the beauty of being able to, uh, which I consider myself a puncher, be able to have that one stop, uh, one punch knockout power because uh, the judge is my right and left hand. And, you know, we don't want to leave it up to the judges if need be, given the recent, uh, the recent bad calls that, that, you know, that the judges have been making. Not all the judges. I don't want to put everyone into that category, but there have been a few, uh, a few fights that definitely seemed a little bit, uh, backwards. And it's unfortunate for the fighters who put all the time, blood, sweat, and tears and energy, uh, guts into the preparation for the fight to better themselves and better their career. And they have it taken away by somebody that probably never even been in the ring before in their life. So that's unfortunate, but at the same time, you know, that's why I like to not leave it in the judge's hands. I like to get the knockout. So, um, and in my opinion, I believe Brian Vera won a decisive victory. Granted, a couple of times he did get wobbled, but that's boxing. You know, you, uh, you're going to get hit just like water skiing. If you go water skiing, you're going to get wet. Wow, good. I mean, that definitely leads me to my next question. There's a lot of people I talk to who are just learning boxing. They're uncertain of how power is generated. Yourself being a fighter who can crack, you certainly have the punching power. So where would you say it comes from? Is it something you've always had naturally, or is it something you've worked to improve? Uh, there is definitely uh, ways of fine-tuning, but it's got to be a God-given. Um, it's definitely an X factor. It's definitely something that's just body makeup. The way you're born, it's a gift from God it w- is what it really is. Cause I've seen guys like the Sergio Moras and the Polymon Aggies, who, like, Polymon Aggies is a great example. Had he been a uh, power puncher, he would be a world beater, given his boxing his boxing IQ and his boxing ability. I mean, to be able to do what he's done in the, what he's done in the game with uh, very limited boxing uh, power, you got to take your hat off to a guy like that, given his boxing IQ and his technical, um, you know, what, 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 he, what he excels in. So it's definitely something that's God-given. Ever since I was an amateur, I believe in the Golden Gloves. I won the Golden Gloves by knocking everybody out, not by by points. And we knew my style was more fitted for the pros as opposed to an amateur uh, style, uh, touch and go. But in this game, you know, it, it, it definitely, you know, power is not everything, but I like my gun going to battle, let's just say that. Definitely, I agree with you 100%. Um, you also have fighters in the game like Timothy Bradley. I've seen some recent pictures from his media day today, and he's looking shredded, but... He doesn't have the most power. He just exceeds in his boxing ability, ring IQ. But if you look at him physically, it looks like he'll just knock your block off. Early thoughts on the Timothy Bradley versus Juan Manuel Marquez fight. Um, how do you see that um, playing out? You know what? I think the odd makers have it pretty accurate. It's such a very slim margin for Marquez being uh, the favorite. You know, Timothy Bradley has a heart bigger than bigger than the state of California, and I think that kind of helps him for his shortcomings with his lack of power. And he's always in shape. He's definitely always in shape, and he showed his chin and his and his, uh, his heart and his will to terminate in that from the undercover fight. Um, you know, but let's be honest, uh, Marquez, granted, he is 40 years old. He does not punch. Uh, uh, he's not a, a soft touch, if you will. He's, uh, uh, I believe he's got enough pop to, to, if he capitalizes and catches, Bradley, the way um, a lot of the cop, I can't, can't say his name, the Ruslan, yeah, uh, I think it might, be, it might make uh, for a short night given his, uh, I think uh, Marcus is a better puncher. Although I did see um, Timothy Bradley get off the canvas against a guy like, uh, I want to say Kendall Holt, if I'm not mistaken, and yeah. uh, come back and, and take care of business. So you can't ever count out Bradley. He's got a heart that definitely um, takes over everything that he does lack, which is punching power. His, his boxing ability is there, and he's been to the big show, so that's not a surprise to him. He's, he's experienced, and I think it's going to be a great fight. Uh, if I have to side with somebody, I, I got to ride with Marquez, given his IQ in the game, and 
he's a legend. Granted, he is four years old, and, and, and Bradley can't outwork him, but I just, uh, if I'm a betting man, I'm going to go ahead and go with the odd makers on this one and, and, and lean more towards Marquez. I agree with that also. I mean, I'm a fan of both fighters, a fan of the sport. I just feel Marquez, he's on emotional roller coaster. He's trying to set history in this particular fight and basically everything you said. Um, overall, just tell the fans, what can we expect from John Molina Jr. next time we see him fight? Definitely, uh, when I get back in there. Uh, also, I want to mention uh, Juan the Baby Bull Diaz. I know he's back in the grand scheme of things. If you would like to lock horns since he's the Baby Bull, that would be a great fighter. If you like that, I wouldn't mind uh, entertaining that fight uh, or taking a fight with me and Juan Diaz. But the fans know when I get in there to fight, it's not going to be the prettiest, but I'm going to be out there and I'm going to give it my all. And I'm going to give everything I have. And every fight that I fight, I am going to the knockout. I'm not going to outpoint somebody. I'm not going to stick my jab in their face in the sense to where it's not going to be a jab fest all night. I'm going in there to, to, to make it a dog fight and go for the knockout. And I appreciate everyone that's followed me uh, this far in my career. And I, can, I want to continue to give them dramatic uh, victories. All right. And where can the fans stay in touch with you and follow you for more info? Over there on Twitter, uh, at Dumbledore Junior 135, uh, the same for Instagram, and also uh, my Facebook. Uh, they had to go over to my fan page because my personal page is overloaded now. But uh, I definitely answer all my uh, all my comments, uh, whether they be good or bad. <laughs> we definitely uh, we, we do our best to try to get back to all the fans and let them know that we're here. And uh, I, I like to stay uh, uh, in touch with my fans. So if you guys want to follow me, go ahead and follow me on all those social networks and uh and we'll definitely be in contact. All right, perfect. And I just want to thank you for your time, John. And we definitely wish you the best of luck. We'll be in touch. And as always, this is Ego signing off. Thank you.